Hey everyone, Caleb here. So today I'm going to show you a type of fruit called a feijoa. And these are the types of plants they grow on. Um, we've created a hedge of nine fruiting feijoa plants. Uh, this is what the foliage looks like. And they are evergreen plants, so um, they do look really good all year round. You don't have to grow them as a hedge though, um, you can just grow them as a specimen tree. And um, a lot of people do that, and also a lot of people um, grow them as hedges like we've done. So this tree here is probably our latest fruiting tree. Um, that's why the fruits are still quite small at the moment. Um, they're a bit undeveloped, hard as rock, so um, they've got a wee while until they ripen. So these trees along here are ones that um, sort of are fruiting now and dropping their fruit. Here's some on the ground. These are what the fruits look like. Um, they are a type of guava, or related to the guava. Um, some people call them pineapple guavas, but I've always known them as feijoas. So, the great thing about these is that you don't have to know when to pick them when they're ripe. Um, they will just simply drop to the ground and they'll just be sitting on the ground ready for you to pick them up and scoff them up. So I'm going to take a couple now, cut them open, and show you guys what they look like on the inside. But look at today's harvest. Let me pour these out and show you guys all of the feijoas. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm going to do with all these feijoas. Okay, so these three feijoas that I've chosen, this one here is quite hard. So I'd say it's underripe and the wind's probably blowing it off. This one here feels to me like about the perfect ripeness. It is a little bit soft and um, you can just feel a bit of give in the skin. Now this one here is just what I would say very slightly overripe. And what you'll find with feijoas is, is that the riper they are, the clearer the inside of the flesh will go. So I'll cut them in, in half and I'll show you the difference in these fruits. So this is the one that I said was a bit underripe. This is what it looks like. It actually looks pretty good to me. Um, I would eat that at this stage. It's not as unripe as I thought it was. Um, if they are quite underripe, then this stuff is more the colour of the skin, like more white, and you won't get that same clearness. So I'll put that aside. This is the one I said felt quite a nice ripeness to me, how I like them. And this is what it looks like, pretty much the same. Um, although it is a bit softer. See the softness in the core there? This feed jar over here is the one I said was, for my liking anyway, a bit overripe. And as you can see, see how much clearer that is? And what you'll find is as they start to go off, this uh, clear flesh will start to slightly get a brown tinge to it and then turn quite brown once it is getting quite um, old. So these f three feijoas here for me are within the limits of how I like um, my, to eat my feijoas. So I would eat all of these. Um, if it was any any less ripe than this one then I wouldn't tend to be too keen on it and if it was more ripe than this one and had slight brown tinge to it, then I would not be keen on eating it. So let me take this half ripe one here. All you do is, to eat it is just to scoop out the flesh like you would a kiwi fruit. Now look at that, that's, that's massive, so I'm just going to take half of it and taste it. So I would say the flavour of Fijos is really like no other fruit. It has its own unique flavour. They have a slight tartness to them, um, and, but they are very sweet and very juicy. Um, I've grown up on these, I absolutely love them. They are definitely up there with my favourite fruits. Um, and every other New Zealander I know love Fijoas. Um, and as you've seen, they are really nice looking trees, prolific fruiters, and definitely one for the backyard. So if you can, find some of these at your local supermarket or your local market. Give them a try and see if you can grow some of them for yourself.